we're going to jump straight into the save system, the load system, and uh, all of that's going to be done mostly in the game state. Uh, we will need to jump into the BP underscore save class. So if we just go ahead and open that, and also, like I said, the game state. So if we just go through, first of all, a few things in the BP underscore save class we're going to look at are the types that we'll be storing. And there's only three of these, so this is going to be nice and straightforward. Just a quick one though, if you are enjoying these videos, find them useful, want to keep up to date with more from the channel, do consider subscribing. And of course, if you have already subscribed, please hit the notification bell. Really, really helps the channel and uh, seen some growth from that recently. So thank you all for doing that. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to add our new variables. So like I said, three of these, the, f the first one I will call funds as we'll be storing the, uh, the funds that the character collects. And rather than being a Boolean, we want to change that to an integer type. Next one, I'm going to call the worn headpiece. So this is the last thing that the player chose to wear. We need to change this to be a type of E headpieces. So remember, this is the enumeration that we created ourselves. So just search for E head and you should get your E headpieces coming up. So this is going to just store what we were last wearing. And then we can actually copy this one. So control W the worn head pieces. I'm going to call this one owned head pieces. And of course this will be all of the head pieces that the player has purchased. So for this to work, we want to change this from a standard single variable to an array. Uh, and if we hit compile, we always want to make sure that in the save file, regardless of what we've done in the past, we add a single element to the array uh, and that we always have none available. So again, we always want to start with not wearing anything and always make sure that we have this to fall back on. So in the save file, this will all be stored. And basically on first load, we're gonna call and just double check everything that's in here and make sure that we have none available in the owned head pieces. The previously worn head piece will also be none uh, and the funds will start at zero. So we can leave that. That is pretty much everything. That's gonna be all that we need to reference from the save class in the game state. So we can pretty much close that and never come back to that class. In the game state, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dump some logic down here on the event begin play and we'll tidy this up as we go. So the first thing is we want to double check, do we have a save file already in memory? That's done by looking for does save game exist? Very simply, just gonna call this one save zero, and we'll leave that as the user index zero. So this is if you wanted like multiple save system, you can change this. I'll promote this to a variable so we can never get this wrong. And I'll just call this one the save name because we will need to reference this a few times and it just avoids typos and saves us a bit of time further down the line. And if you're familiar with this, because we've already filled in the slot here, the variable when we promote it to a variable already has the save zero stored. So from this, we can do a branch check so we can see whether or not that save exists. Uh, if it does, then we will load the save. If it doesn't, then we will create a new one. But we're gonna come back to this a little bit later. We'll do our loading first of all. A little bit weird because we know we don't have a save. Just when it comes to coding these out, I find that this way makes a bit more sense. And also because of the way that I know that we're gonna drop these into functions a bit later. So what we want to do is if this does exist, then we want to load game from slot. That slot, of course, is gonna be the variable that we stored a moment ago remembering to leave this at user index zero. Now this is possibly gonna be the only time that we ever cast in this project. So like I said, it can be heavy. This is only being done on begin play and the save class doesn't have any references to anything else. So it's not gonna be a huge memory overhead. And we do specifically need the variables which are gonna be easier just through a cast. So what we want to do is cast to BP underscore save and we're gonna promote this to our current save reference. So this means that we never have to cast again at least. So just promote this to a variable and we'll call this one save ref. And what we want to do, because we're assuming here that we have a save file already made, it means that we've already stored the funds that we have, the piece of headgear that was worn and the headgear that is owned. So we're gonna get our newly created ref and we're going to get the funds. So get funds and we'll promote this to a variable in the game state, which I'll just call current funds and we'll hook this up. We're gonna do the same again, but this time for the currently worn headpiece. So get headpiece or, or get worn headpiece. And again, we'll promote this to a variable and we'll call this currently worn headpiece. Again, we'll hook this up and just tidy things as we go. Probably know what we're doing next. We're gonna do this one more time and we're gonna get the array, which was the owned headpieces. 
we again promote this to a variable and we'll call this one currently owned head pieces. Okay, so now when it comes to the menu and things like that, if we ever need to know what we have available to uh, to wear or what's still left available to buy, then the game state is going to be where we're getting all of this information. And again, that's why it's important that we have this in both of the levels and in both of the game modes, because the currently worn headpiece, for example, will need to be remembered when we go into the main map as well. So this is our loading done. This is where we're going to store everything. Now, the first time that we enter this, of course, we're not going to have a save. So we're just going to create a default one so that we have something in future iterations of the loading to load from. Uh, and it will always have that reference. So what we want to do, remember that we've probably, we've already loaded this at some point. So we can come down here and we'll say create save game. And we just want to fill this with our BP underscore save. And this way we can get another reference here. We don't need to cast this time. We can just set that immediately to be the reference of the save class that we're using. And this is pretty much exactly the same as what we did just up here, but it's the other way around. So now what we want to do is we want to keep getting the save ref and we're going to set the variables within. So we're going to set the funds. We're going to set the worn headpiece and we want to set the owned headpieces. So the funds that we want to save, assuming that we've done something in the game, will be the current funds. So we can just drag that in and place that onto the pin. The same for the current one headpiece, we'll just place that onto the pin. The same again for the array here, we just, so we'll just place that onto the pin again. Finally, we're just going to hook all of these up so that was nice and simple. And that means that now when we save, even if we haven't actually done anything, it's just going to remember that we have the currently one headpiece will default to none, so that's fine. So even if we haven't done anything or equipped anything, uh, again, we just wanna make sure, like we did previously, uh, so that we don't override the save class to have no array elements. We want to default our owned headpieces in the game state to none as well, so that we have at least that one headpiece that we can save if we haven't made any changes in the game. So make sure that you go ahead and do that. So we're changing the currently owned headpieces we're adding an array element and we're making sure that that array element is none. Okay, now this is all done on the begin play, so it's looking a little bit messy. What we can do is this is essentially just one big kind of load function where we're also, whilst checking if we're loading, doing a save if we haven't saved in the past. So grab all of these nodes, right click on any one of them, and we'll collapse this to a function. And I'm going to call this one load game. So that now looks a little bit tidier and we know all we're doing on event begin play is we're loading the game. Now the next thing is inside of the load function, we're actually gonna to need to reuse this code a little bit later because other classes will be coming in and making the updates and wanting to save the information out. So we can grab just this logic down here. And again, we'll collapse this into a function and we'll call this one save game. Okay, so now whenever we need another class will ping us through the interface, uh, which we will be adding later, but again, I'll keep that to its own topic. It will say, you've just bought something or you've just spent money, save that so we don't lose it. We can now call this function at any point in the game as it has its own little function made that's nice and neat to reuse. And again, this is very simple if you wanted to add more things. So this is going purely for headpieces in this playlist, but this would apply to things like eyes, if you've got different eyes you wanted to customize, mouths, things like that. Uh, you could do that either through meshes, the same way I am, where we're attaching things and we'll be attaching them to sockets. Uh, alternatively, you could do things like if you had a mesh with a texture you can swap out, you just need to keep a reference to the eye texture and things like that. Uh, and all of this will just be saved in the same way, you just add another thing here and another reference to it in the save class. So what we can do now, just do a quick test because again, Unfortunately, at the end of this video, nothing has really changed. This is all just that kind of behind the scenes setup, but we can see that things will be happening. So if we just debug through this, uh, when we first press play, uh, at some point, because I think I've been changing things, the game has lost reference to the game mode to use. So if you're finding this issue uh, where we're coming in and you're getting the spectator pawn, you'll know you've got a spectator pawn because you've got the sphere flying around. Uh, we just wanna make sure that we're in the right map, first of all, so I'm in the menu, which should be fine. Just reload that, uh, we'll see what happens in the main map. So in the main map, this works. So in case you're getting this issue, we're starting off the BP underscore game mode menu. We should be getting the player um, and we should have the player control in the game state. So something's not happening here as it should. So we can see when we press play, um, I'm actually getting the default pawn, a couple of camera actors, uh, still using the camera actor. So that is one thing that's actually working. And I'm also getting game mode base as the default game mode. So I'm not sure why this is happening because it actually, what I was expecting is for this to have changed. 
but it still seems to know what to use. It's just not using it. I don't want to override things here because we actually have the override in the main level. So in the main level, I've overridden this to use the game mode base. So all of those are correct and we can control the character as we want. So I want to leave this as the default. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close and restart the project. I'm keeping this in just in case you get the same issue. And I think that might actually solve the problem. Okay, so closing it and opening it didn't actually work, but it has resolve some of the issues. So if you press fix up redirectories, so right click on the content folder and then select fix up redirectories. This will just make sure everything is uh, updated if you've had any folder movement, which is what the problem was, is that we created that game folder and we moved the blueprints to the game folder. Completely forgot about that. Uh, something I've been aware of before. So that has then done what I thought would happen is this has all been set back to none. So we just want the default game mode to be back to the BP underscore game mode menu and all of that will update. And now if we come in, we should have our character and the UI all back as we want. Now, the thing I wanted to display was the process of going through the save load. And because I've now pressed play a few times, it's already done that. So I'm gonna wipe the save game, which has now been created. I was gonna save this for a bit later, but we may as well do it now. If you haven't seen this before, it's really easy to clear a save. We just want to do a delete game in slot. So I'm going to plug that into the event begin play. Make sure that we set the slot to be the one that we've promoted to a variable earlier. Hit compile and press play. Now, of course, you're not going to see anything happen, but that has just found the save file that was created last time we pressed play and it has removed it. So now I'm just going to debug through this so that we can see what happens when we load the first time and then the difference of what happens when we load the second time with a save readily available. So we're going to come in and step into this. Uh, so we already know how this branch check is going to go. It's going to see if a save exists. It will not. So we're going to step over. So it's going to go down to false, go into save game. And because I stepped over that, we didn't see this, but uh, it's just set all of the variables to their uh, zero, none, and just a single element of none. Okay. So if we come into this again, we will now have a save file. So again, we can step into this, step over these. We don't need to do the branch. Uh, and actually it's quite lucky we did this because I forgot a step. Uh, it's just jumped back into the save game and I actually forgot to finish this function off. So what we want to do, once we've stored all of the variables, we want to save game to slot. So debugging, even just for fun, can actually be quite helpful. We're gonna set the slot to be the one that we've stored. We're going to set the game object to be the reference to our save reference. So we already have this from the beginning of the function. And again, we're keeping the index as zero, which is fine because that means that we can actually debug through this now to see it saving into the bp underscore save. So we'll step in one last time here, step over twice again. We're gonna go down to save, step into this this time, we'll step over a few times, stepping over just so that we avoid some of the macros. We don't want the new window to open up to go into like for loops and branches and things because we know what the results are gonna be there. So we're now setting the variable and we can see here, we've got the reference to our bp underscore save. The current funds are zero, so we're setting the funds inside of that class to also be zero. Uh, same for these. And then we're saving this out to the slot named save zero. Okay, so with that done, we can now close this again, press play again. This is what I wanted to show. We'll step in and this time when we step over twice, we're gonna go true. And we're now loading from the slot that we already had. And this is how we're going to be filling our stored variables. So we've now got funds still set to be zero, one headpiece is none. And we're gonna get the owned headpieces and set the local variable to also be none. So just in case the save load wasn't that clear, just wanted to see a debug through that. So we can actually see at least something is happening in the background. Uh, and that was quite handy because I forgot a really important step here anyway. So we've now done that as well. So this is already becoming quite a long one. I'll leave this video here. That is the game state pretty much ready to go and interact with other classes. As always though, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel, do consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification to make sure that you get those updates. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.